In this demonstration, you'll learn how to set up a steady state thermal electric conduction simulation to gauge the performance of a thermal electric cooler. To start, I'll select the thermal template from the study panel. I need to import a geometry file, so I'll leave this set to the default. When you import, this option is enabled by default as well, so that you can modify the imported geometry from the geometry task. I'm going to add the electric conduction physics to this simulation and accept the default selection for the options list so that contacts in the interface of the bodies are detected automatically. I will then apply the template and create the simulation process. In creating my simulation process, the first thing that I'm asked to do is select a geometry. I'll select the file for this thermal electric cooler. AIM loads the geometry and sets up a simulation process with typical default settings for geometry, mesh, physics, and results. AIM has automatically created the physics solution process. Here is a summary of all of the tasks, along with their status. These tasks are also available in the workflow window in a data flow diagram format. The red exclamation mark here tells me that the physics task needs more information to complete the simulation. I'll click on it to go into the physics task. You can see that four contacts are created for this case. While a material has been assigned automatically to the geometry, I want to change the material to copper for the copper plate. So, I click this default material assignment. I need to select bodies rather than faces, so I use the body selection filter. Then, I select the copper plates and semiconductor pellet and replace the default location. Now, I change the material to copper. These properties are already defined for copper. I'm done with copper, but I still need to define the material for these two semiconductors. First, I'll assign the material for this N-type semiconductor. I select it in the geometry, and then right-click to add a new material. I'll name it N-type semiconductor. First, I'll set the default state to solid. Now I need to add my material properties. I'll add isotropic resistivity. And set the value. I finished defining the material properties by adding isotropic Seebeck coefficient and isotropic thermal conductivity. You can see the values here. I'll repeat this process and assign material properties for the P-type semiconductor. You can see it defined here. So, I have set three material assignments, copper, N-type semiconductor, and P-type semiconductor. I am now going to add some loads and constraints. First, I'll set a temperature. I change the selection filter back to faces and select the bottom faces of the copper strap. Then I right-click to add a temperature constraint and set the value. This demonstrates thermal electric cooling. Next, I'll ground the end of this P-type semiconductor. I select the end face and right-click to add a voltage. I'll set this to zero to indicate it's grounded. I will also set a current on the input electric terminal and a rate of heat flow to the copper strap. So I've set up four conditions, temperature and heat flow, voltage and current. Now I'll solve the physics solution task. Because the meshing task was also ready, it will be automatically updated first. Everything's finished, so now I can view my results. I'll click on the results task, and then evaluate. 
the template has already inserted several results by default. One contour result is temperature. This simulation results in a cold junction. You can see that the face with the heat flux has a temperature close to zero. Next, I can view the electric potential result. You can see the current passes from the input terminal to the ground, from higher voltage to lower voltage as expected. This concludes this demonstration of an end-to-end steady-state thermal electric induction simulation in AIM.